So in the news this week, just this week, we've had DLC for ARMS. We've had DLC, free DLC for Animal Crossing as a summer update. We've had uh, extra levels, which you could classify as DLC in Doom. So games are not remiss to adding extra content, charging for it or not charging for it. So we thought, let's have our thoughts on DLC. What are some good examples and bad examples? More to be recent, you know, recent games, especially if we focus on Switch, but anything that comes to mind. Um, so I'm going to start on your general thoughts about DLC. No specifics yet, we'll go into that a little bit details later. But, you know, your, your kind of thoughts on, is DLC a good thing, Nick? I think for me overall, DLC is a good thing. And it's good because if you've enjoyed an experience, then you can get a little bit more for a fairly low price, usually, if we talk about paid DLC. Um, and I am a big fan of Game of the Year editions of games, which... If you don't want to play something straight away, if you don't want to pull, pay full price for it, but you're interested in it, then usually a couple of years later, you can pick up a Game of the Year edition with the, all the DLC, and it's only a little bit more expensive than the regular version. I'm talking specifically about Steam here, and I think specifically racing games have done this very well, where new tracks, new cars, new content gets added over the year or over a year and a half, and then at the end of that period, you can buy everything in a in a full package for a re for the regular price, basically. So if you don't want to jump in straight away and then buy all the DLC on day one, then you have the option later to just buy the base game a little bit cheaper, or you can buy everything for not an inflated price basically so in 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 that way i like dlc um we don't see too much of that in the switch though not really but i mean i it wouldn't surprise me i mean nintendo that because nintendo's dlc is usually free if we mm. if we look at games like arms splatoon 2 mario tennis like when you buy that game later you've got basically the full game with all the dlc the free dlc i wouldn't be surprised if we saw a game of the year edition of Pokemon Sword and Shield, as I said last week, and Breath of the Wild didn't that have a, a, a like a complete edition, where it included the Champions DLC and the the other one. Yeah, but you only saved about a penny. You know, <laughs> like they added, they basically added the price of the DLC onto the base package and then knocked a penny. It was something ridiculous yeah. like that. Well, what Ni what Nintendo should do, they won't, but what they should is they should release a new version of Breath of the Wild, physical and retail a retail and digital sorry uh that includes the dlc and is the full price of the game because it's been what they could do the same with splatoon 2 as well yeah they could include the octo expansion for yeah. sure you know in a in a sort of full packaged version but we know that they won't do that so greg what are your thoughts on dlc um i would agree like i think generally dlc is a good thing like when like years ago when the first kind of started becoming a thing it was almost like a, a bad word, you know? <laughs> like, you see yeah. DLCs, like, everybody's sort of saying, like, oh, terrible, like, I can't, I can't believe that they haven't included this content, like, in the, in the base Unfinished game. Unfinished games, yeah. Yeah. And, like, I'm sure there are some examples where that is still a case where, like, a company will obviously hold something back just to, to charge it as DLC further down the line. But it, it depends how sort of complete the original game is mm -hmm. anyway. Like, um, if you look at something like, I suppose, like Mario Kart 8, for example, like that was a, a complete game really on the on the Wii U as it was. Very good game. But like, why why not release more more courses and stuff and then you can charge a wee bit extra? Like, um, there's enough stuff there already. So more of the same. People want to pay the money don't charge too much for it then it's all good so let's get kicked off with some free dlc then let's not pay any money mm -hmm. are there any games and I've, I've made a list here of, of ones that are pertinent to me but obviously you, you'll have different experience as well are there any games that give free dlc or it's, it's dlc is a hard word here because sometimes it's just an update you know but these updates over time for me accumulate into something which could have been sold as dlc at the end of the day and the one game which stands out straight away for me is Human Fall Flat. 
um, every now and again. And they throw these events out to um, the community and say, right, uh, it might be it might be uh, if you follow them on Twitter and all that, they might throw some out like, give us an idea for a theme and we'll make a level around it. Right? So they've done new levels like ice and thermal and steam. And there's another one I, I can't quite think of. But they've also done ones where fans are more hands-on and actually make the levels. Like this is a golf update, which will be coming further down the line. And they're all free. Mm. Everything, every single little bit they've added to it. It's it's a game in itself, you know. So they've, they've basically at least doubled the size of the initial base game. And they've charged nothing for it. Any other good examples, Nick? I think there are some good examples. Um, The games that you've highlighted here, Animal Crossing, uh, Mario Tennis Aces. Is is Animal Crossing, because you you do get a a split between the user base there, where some people go, this should have been in the base game, this should be now straight away. Personally, I feel there was far too much content cut from Animal Crossing, and that the game when it released in March, um, it wasn't as feature-rich as while well, as um, what's New Leaf? New Leaf's base game. And updates are fine. New content updates are fine if that's what you want to do. But I think cutting content so it can be released later is not a good way to do it. Um, we've spoken about Animal Crossing a lot, actually, about... Yeah, but, you know, it, as it... Prog- I mean, it's, there's an argument that could be made that... Well, it's just to keep keep people interested and keep them progressing, which I understand and I kind of agree with. But at the same time, I feel there was too much stuff cut from Animal Crossing and that for fans of the series, I think they didn't have enough content that w- that would probably have been expected to be in the game. And yes, they had new things as well, but I thought I thought too much got cut. Now for Splatoon, it's a little bit different because I think... That is a good way to keep people engaged over the course of two years, is to slowly drip feed new content. And I feel that the base game of Splatoon had enough content um, in terms of levels and in terms of... Well, I, I know the, the original game didn't have the um, the ranked mode, did it, at, at first? It was literally just the, the, the turf battle. And then as time yes. went on, they added new stuff. So that felt really good. I mean, the base game was quite bare bones. But because it was so new, it still felt interesting and engaging. And Mario Tennis as well, there was enough characters in the original game and it was just nice to get more as time went on. So I mean, And as time went on, you got a lot of you characters did, at, the, yeah. uh, at the end of the, when they finished. And yeah. new modes as well. Yeah. Occasionally. But I mean, it's difficult. Wargroove is an example of a really good game that's added DLC. You, I see you've got that on your list. Getting free levels in Doom is is really good but i think there's a difference between free dlc and stripping content from the base game and i think that practice is not good and i'm always immediately put off if a company advertises dlc before a game releases (laughs) activision yeah (laughs) and nintendo are guilty of it as well to be honest especially in recent years they've become much more guilty of it and in cases where they announce dlc before the game releases i'm always going to be hesitant to pick it up on day one and would probably wait until the game is full before i jumped in and there you know if content has clearly been cut then probably i would decide not to buy it but if it's a a feature rich game like mario odyssey or breath of the wild then of course you can jump in whenever you want you have an option to get the dlc if it's paid dlc or not and then you're still getting the full experience. So it's a it's a difficult thing to balance, but I definitely think announcing paid DLC before the game releases is a bad practice, especially if it's clearly content that's been cut. Koei Tech more. I was looking at the recent releases. They got Fairy Tale coming up, and they, they tend to they just have skins, and <laughs> they are so so expensive. We'll go talk about that in the kind of paid DLC, I suppose. Yeah, it's it's scandalous how much extra you would be paying for everything if you got the full game. Greg, any good examples, bad examples of free DLC that you can think of? Um, well, for me, it kind of partly depends when when it's released. Like uh, Nick was talking about Animal Crossing there, and how like the base game doesn't seem as as feature rich as like the previous Animal Crossing games. Um, and like on the one hand, obviously, when 
like the new DLC comes out for Animal Crossing that they'll I'm sure they'll dot out for the rest of the year or maybe the next couple of years or something and that's an incentive to go back to the game mm-hmm. to to play it but like like in my sort of example like I played the game for a couple of weeks and then just sort of got bored of it and even like the thought of like this new swimming one that's coming out and stuff like I'm not really that bored now at the moment if that's if some of that stuff was in the original game maybe I would still actually be playing it. <laughs> so it's tricky, you know. Um, you could, Super Mario Odyssey as well. Um, I That's a great game. Um, I think in Europe, I suppose infamously given <laughs> an 8 out of 10 <laughs> as a, amongst our community. But like, um, it's probably not far off where the, the game actually is. I would say it's, it's probably more like a 9 and like, in, in many aspects it is a 10 but like there are things that hold it back but like going after the the counter of like the 999 moons it was a bit of a slog to get all the coins to purchase the rest of the, the moons and like you're sort of just like repeating sections that give you a good amount of coins and stuff and like it took a decent amount of time the DLC came out pretty much just as I had finished getting all the coins and stuff, and the DLC, like the Luigi's Balloon World and stuff, like chasing all people, that would actually have been good fun, and you get a, a decent amount of coins doing that. It just came out that little bit too late for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like, having to go after all those coins in the main game kind of, it soured my experience a wee tiny bit, because it's like, like I'm doing this for completion, I always like, pretty much get absolutely everything in Mario games bar Super Mario Sunshine which I didn't 100% but that's been pretty much the only one whereas if I was able to like chase after like my friends balloons and play hide and seek and whatever it is like that would have been a much better way of just getting those last few coins I needed to purchase the moons Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but at the same time like it the the update was free and if the if we hadn't known about the the balloon world or anything and it never came out then you'd like you probably wouldn't really have have thought much about it i guess i think it was late for me as well it 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 did seem a rather late inclusion as if oh we're trying to draw you back in here but it's just not enough to draw me back in so maybe that was a bad example of DLC trying to draw me back in anyway. One I will mention, which uh, Nick has already mentioned anyway, is Wargroove. Mm-hmm. The game itself is huge, yep. but then you added this double trouble. Um, uh, it is basically an extra uh, for, for, for five extra missions with two branches off each mission. And it added extra characters, extra, you know, each character then has its own power up. Um, it added extra story, it added extra, but the, the, the kind of extra that was the best thing about it, it added in two player co op into the main campaign, um, which just took, an, took it to another perspective, actually. You know, me and my son were playing the same campaign and attacking on two different fronts. Yeah. Um, brilliant, brilliant free DLC. And another one, I suppose, is just keeping me coming back all the time is another game I always bang on about, Hypercharge Unboxed. They keep on... There hasn't been an update for ages, but there's one schedule which has been held back for a little while because of coronavirus, but it should be out in the next couple of weeks anyway. Um, They're adding extra maps. They're adding extra skins. They're adding always adding something to put you back in. They've added extra uh, local PvP player modes. Uh, There's always something being added to it, and they're going to add a lot more as well. So even through their initial, this is what we're going to add, they're going to add even more on top Mm. again. So I'm looking forward to what else they can throw at me. I think just to add very briefly to that, Lots of, I mean, there's lots of talk about games as a service, especially multiplayer games like Fortnite, mm-hmm. for example. And like, I'm not yeah. a big fan of those, but looking at some of those games, and especially indie games, and the two examples you mentioned of Hypercharged and Wargroove, and then I would add to that list, I would add Ed to the Gungeon, and I would add Stardew Valley. Like, I mean, these games, Stardew Valley is quite old now, but it's constantly getting updates and new content. Maybe it takes a year, but something will be added. And I think Minecraft is kind of the game that set that off because every once in a while there'll be quite a substantial new update but you only pay for the game once and it's just constantly evolving and i'm sure there are some updates in all games where people you know 
they think, well, something's been lost from the game that was the, the previous version. But I think on a whole, adding new content and new levels and new ideas to games, especially these sort of cheaper indie games, is a really good way to get more sales, to generate goodwill with the consumers and to keep like happy customers engaged and keep them playing. So it's it's an interesting new model, we could say. But I think it's just a way of generating more sales and keeping games relevant. But it's I don't think it's a bad thing. Minecraft is a good example there. Mm-hmm. We, within the last 12 months, we've had um, three large updates. Yeah. The Nether update, which just happened. This has been this bee, the summer kind of thing. And there's been jungles and added pandas. So it's adding new new biomes. Mm-hmm. There's lots kind of areas in there. There's new animals. And it's, it's constantly... And the big thing it did on Switch as well, from the original one, they, when uh, Minecraft came out on Switch, it was just like an upgraded Wii U version. And it was called the Switch Edition. But they upgraded that for free to mm-hmm. the Bedrock Edition. So it's got parity with across PC and everything. Mm-hmm. So uh, they have been very, very good at supporting Minecraft on Switch. Great. What about some good paid DLC? Um, what have you paid for? Myself personally, Splatoon Two stands out. That was uh, the you know the Octo expansion. It was one player, but the levels in there brought me straight back to Mario Galaxy. Um, <laughs> excellent additions there was a couple of infuriating ones where um i had to jump around dodging bullets or whatever not get hit once but what a what a great little package for 18 pounds did you boys pick up the splatoon 2 one yes greg yeah nick did yeah (laughs) i haven't actually because um i haven't finished the the main game actually um which surprised me a bit because I actually really enjoyed like the single player in the original Splatoon. Like like you say, like it had Mario Galaxy vibes. Like and some of the bosses in that original game were just like amazing. Like some mm-hmm. of my favorite boss battles ever, <laughs> really. Um, but I, I just can't quite get into the Splatoon 2's campaign for some reason. Like I play it a wee bit and maybe do a level, and it's like I just can't can't seem to keep going with it. So like I don't know if I will ever actually buy the Auto expansion. Any expansions you have bought and you're pleased with? Well, obviously, like I mentioned earlier, obviously Mario Kart 8, like the the DLC tracks for that on the Wii U, obviously we got those as part of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, like everything was in the the one package. But it kind of, in one way, it kind of disappoints me that they didn't keep going with that because I would love to see like (laughs) pretty much every Mario Kart track be released. Like they could just... If every few months they release like, oh, here's here's a new couple of four tracks, you can pay seven pounds or do some sort of deal where you're paying like money for like a, a bundle of of cups or yeah. something. Like I I would absolutely pay the money for it because like I've played Mario Kart Eight pretty much to death and would just love a few more new tracks just mm-hmm. to to freshen things up a wee bit or yep. even a few new random characters or something, just anything at all really. This this was one of uh, Nintendo's earliest kind of paid DLC efforts as well, and it kind of set the benchmark to the the kind of the, the price and you were paying to the quality and quantity of what you were getting, and they charged. I remember them charging seven pound for two new cups and eight tracks. Or £11 for two packs, which then had obviously four cups and 16 tracks, which which when you break it down to the, the base price of the game mm-hmm. was very reasonable. It was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you couldn't, couldn't really fault it. Like it was, it kind of got us, um, it probably got some of us excited about what way Nintendo would do DLC in the future. Yeah. And obviously, we've seen them do it maybe slightly wrong <laughs> at times. <laughs> like, but um, I've also bought the. Um, the Cat and Toad DLC, I think it was maybe it had went on offer a little bit um, a few months ago. It was, I think I got it for like five pounds something maybe, and and I loved the original game on the on the Wii U. As I thought it was amazing and done it all hundred percent, and then repurchased it on Switch, and again did it all hundred percent. And but for some reason bought the DLC and again can't get into it. I don't know what it is, but like. In a way, it almost kind of irritates me because, like, I had all that game absolutely complete, and now that I've bought the DLC, it's kind of I feel like it's sitting on my Switch and it's not, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not completely done now. And that's so it's frustrating. Like, I will probably eventually go back to it. Well, someday I will take a notion to ah, fancy a wee bit more Captain Toad, and I will get back into it. But it's sort of like when I played it the last time, and you know the way you get your like secondary objectives, like uh, beat the level with like two hundred coins or something. 
and I'd done the level a few times and I just could not find <laughs> where the, the last few coins would be that I needed. And it just uh, kind of frustrated me a bit and I just I haven't been back to it. That's a shame. <laughs> Nick, <laughs> I, 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 Captain Toad was good, uh, but not good enough for me to pick up the DLC. Nick, any good examples? Similar, similar sentiments. Octo Expansion was substantial new content for not a very high price. Marokai 8 on the Wii U was spectacular DLC and a very, very good and promising start. That Nintendo has stuck to in a way, but not completely. Um, Torna, I see Torna. You've got Torna on the list, which I would actually class as a separate game, to be honest, rather than DLC. Because it is, I mean... You get some bonuses for Xenoblade 2, but still, it is it is basically a new game. Is it worth a twenty six ninety nine asking tag, though? Difficult to say. I got it on I got it on uh, sale. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'd probably have to finish it before I could put a value to it. I think I paid like 15 or 16 quid for it. Um, and yeah, just if the game is complete, as I said before, and substantial, then DLC is always welcome if, if you want to keep going. Um Fire Emblem Three Houses is a complete game with three storylines, but they've added a fourth for those who want it. Um, it adds a little bit to the story, but the story is still complete if you don't play the DLC. So I think when they take that kind of approach, it's a good idea. I think I've mentioned it before. I definitely mentioned it in the article that we wrote for In Europe about DLC, that Breath of the Wild's DLC was pretty disappointing in comparison with other games that nothing really substantial was added to for the price that was asked for asked for it. So I personally, having finished Breath of the Wild and most of the DLC, I don't think I would have got the DLC had I known the content that was available in it. Um lots of fetch quests. Wasn't yeah, it? It just, get this, open this treasure I mean, chest. We were yeah. we were promised extra story content, but that was minimal to be honest. And I I really liked the trial. The, the 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 master tree or the master sword trial that was that was good but i mean that's that's just a few rooms with enemies i mean that could have been added as free dlc really but i don't know i just think yeah if, if the content is substantial and the game is complete by itself like mario kart 8 then new content at a good price for me is always welcome like if if i've enjoyed the game and want more then i'll always buy something a little bit extra for a for a good price Greg, any more last examples of good DLC before we go on to the bad? <laughs> um, I suppose like uh, Smash Brothers is isn't too bad. <laughs> like it's, um, I like the way that you don't have to necessarily spend like the twenty two forty nine to buy like a, an entire DLC pack. Like you can, like for me, I just wanted Banjo Kazooie, so I just bought them and got the stage and the music and stuff with it. So that was that was enough for me. So mm-hmm. I didn't. I don't think that's too bad. But that's pretty much it. Do you really? think they are, uh, if for completionists, you know, those people who want to get 100% of everything and all the me fighter characters, do you think they're milking the me fighters a bit? They're only 70 pence. There's so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, I funnily right enough, I have spent the 70p or whatever to get the, the cuphead one because that's what one, I wasn't yeah. saying. Yeah. Like you say, if, if, if you want everything, you're, you're, you are going to spend an awful lot of money on Smash Brothers with the. With all these pack stuff, like the game on the eShop itself is like what sixty, sixty nine ninety nine mm-hmm. or something. And then plus all these, like you're going over a hundred pounds, you know, just to get all these DLC packs stuff. It's a, it's a lot of money, and but if if you want that stuff, like you can pay the money. You don't like you're not being forced to buy it as such. Like uh, there's, there's, I mean, there's more than enough characters <laughs> in Smash Brothers as there yeah. is at the start. Like I, uh, I think I I still have only unlocked maybe about half of them. <laughs> Uh, Min Min is the eighty first character. Yeah, crazy amount, and ha- even like the thought of like balancing all those characters, like it's <laughs> you have to pay for it a wee bit. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a there's a price to content ratio problem with Smash Brothers DLC. I think it's too expensive. Come if we look at the yeah, base game and how I, many I'm, I'm... how many fighters there are, it's I think there's something a little bit out of whack there. I think the characters are too expensive. The me costumes are definitely too expensive. Um, cause I... it's exactly that kind of thing I was talking about Mario Kart you look at the base pack mm-hmm. how much content you get then you, you've got oh that's reasonable this is you're right this opposite it's £5.39 for one fighter and a, and a, and a, 
a, a, a stadium and music as uh, well arena, I suppose, yeah. and music as well yeah you, you're paying for a, you, you do get a, a lot of content a little bit on the pricey side mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. so bad content <laughs> <laughs> bad DLC and loot boxes always get me and mm-hmm. especially if you're paying for loot boxes you, you don't obviously loot boxes are there to tease you into paying money to buy extra things on from the loot boxes and Rocket League is a bit insidious like that. But I, and then again, I paid, bought Rocket League outright. I've never spent anything extra in Rocket League. Um, what else is... Um, Super Kirby Clash also sticks out with me. It's one of those games you've got to keep on plugging away at. And every every 12 hours, you can get five gem apples from the tree. The gem apples then you can use to purchase new uh, weapons and new outfits for Kirby to make him tougher. That is such a laborious, slow process. You wouldn't believe it. Um, so I have paid 79 pence to upgrade my uh, my gem apple tree so I can get 20 gem apples at a time. Um, but in that game alone, you can pay up to 74 pounds and 99 pence to max out your gem apple tree so you get 2,500 gem apples on a drop. Crazy money. <laughs> you know, <what> Nick is <laughs> Nick. Is there anything stands out for you as that is insidiously bad as DLC? I think obviously that's the worst kind of DLC. Loot boxes is, is definitely the worst. Are definitely the worst offender, and thankfully they've gone from Rocket League now. They've been removed completely. But I did buy I did buy one uh, loot box or a set of loot boxes in Rocket League, and it was one of the worst decisions I've ever made. Spending money <laughs> on a game, I got I got. Um, repeats of items as well so i bought 10 loot boxes and i think i had two items that actually were 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 like copies of another one so it's a waste of money basically and yeah anything i think all cosmetic dlc is pointless like i personally would never have any interest in buying it um smash brothers okay I, i i also got cuphead and i would maybe get another couple of characters but i still think they should be cheaper so basically any cosmetic DLC, any loot boxes, anything that requires you to spend money to to speed up progress is is just something that I am never going to be interested in and I'm never going to play. So I think... Let's hope yeah. Pokemon Cafe Mix doesn't uh, go that far down that way. <laughs> it, well, of course, it depends how it's done as well. If it's exploitative, yeah. then it's terrible, obviously. But yeah. if it allows you to play the game in a normal way, as in you can sit down and play it for as long as you like and still make progress without needing to do anything extra or spend money, then it's not as bad. But it, I mean, ga- well, ga- What's your take on Fortnite then? They do loot boxes, yeah. and I, I was looking up the price of things. If I wanted to get a stormtrooper, I think, oh, I want to run around as a stormtrooper. You'd have to spend one thousand five hundred V bucks, which is about twelve pound fifty for a skin. Yeah, but you, I mean, you scandalous. It is, and you, but you can make V bucks in game. Like the yeah. one saving grace, in my opinion, for Fortnite is that all the DLC is cosmetic, and if you have no interest in that, then you don't need to spend any money whatsoever. So I think you know running an economy of a game based on cosmetics can make a, a free to game free to play game enjoyable because there's no pressure and to, to get better to and accessible people. yeah and obviously like i bought i think i bought one battle pass and that was it i never bought with money any uh, I, I paid v money to get v bucks bought a battle pass and then played for about 3 or 4 months just using the currency in the game that regenerated as I progressed. But think about how much money they make. So people are obviously buying cosmetics. Like to some people it's important, but at least the game can be enjoyed by everybody and you're not punished for not spending money. I had a similar experience with another Battle Royale, uh, Realm Royale. Mm -hmm. Uh, Once you earn enough crowns, you can just keep on earning the crowns and never spend a single penny on it to keep on upgrading Mm -hmm. that Battle Pass. Mm -hmm. What about you, Greg? Bad well, he's, examples. You have both DLC. basically went over what the what the worst thing is, which is for me the loot boxes. Um, just getting those random items, like spending money, and like 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 you might get repeats of stuff that you already had, or it's just it's awful. And like Lee, you said you've you've never spent an extra penny on Rocket League. I haven't either. I've played over like I think it's over three hundred and fifty hours now, or something something crazy. Like I haven't haven't really touched it that much for a few months actually. But 
I did always kind of like that when I unlocked new stuff just automatically or whatever like and would get something new it was like oh, it's, it's a nice wee bonus and yeah there there is stuff that I would like and if like when I was playing it like maybe like the loot box and stuff were still a thing you know like if there's stuff that I liked I wouldn't have paid money for like a decryptor or whatever it was <laughs> to to like hope that I randomly got it from from one of those crates but if I could have bought it outright, then I would possibly have been interested. But again, like it's all cosmetic, so it's not it's not that big a deal. Um, one of the worst, of, like uh, all that cosmetic stuff's fine, like I suppose. But one of the worst offenders is probably one that I haven't really experienced myself, but I know about it all too well. And it would be like uh, Ultimate Team for FIFA, like spending money for like random players. You might get somebody decent. You might not. Yeah. So you're. And Isn't like, the algorithm for that as well? The more you spend, the more likely you are to get a better player. I would assume it's some something like yeah. that. Yeah, it's um, really insidious. Yeah, yeah, and like we sort of like I sort of mentioned about FIFA before. You know, you'll have games where it just feels like it plays absolutely terrible, and so maybe make you want to 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 actually put some money in to try and get a better player, but like. I think it's just, it feels really shady. And like the worst thing, maybe even worse than that, is that FIFA, with essentially with the Switch version, like obviously we're getting another Legacy Edition, the like kits and like menu update could easily be a DLC for mm-hmm. people who already own like the previous game to pay like, I don't know, like. Nine ninety nine or even like fifteen pounds or something just just for the update, but to charge full price again for the same game of FIFA nineteen, like it's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Which is practically DLC. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Crazy. Okay, going on to my last question, and boys, this is games that need DLC, and you would happily throw money at Nintendo and third party developers to purchase it. I'd I'd be quite happy now to. 51 worldwide games i just drop in now and again and it's one of those games that's going to be played for a long term it's one of those evergreen titles as nintendo say every now and again even a couple of days ago i was playing ludo and we played a bit of uh back uh, backgammon not backgammon uh blackjack and we, we just drop into a game and there's a couple of games you go right i want to learn this um talking about 51 worldwide games uh, they've got one of the Mahjong wrongs, rules wrong. <laughs> there's, there's like an unwinnable situation where you should be able to win. I put it on Twitter as well. I've checked it out and I'm not wrong there. I've played Mahjong quite a bit. I know I should have won and they wouldn't <laughs> let me win. <laughs> Cheating game. Um, but I would pay for extra games, mm. you know, as long as that kind of card, you know, extra card games, extra board games, something a bit different in there. And I would, as long as the price is right, of course. And we've mentioned it already, Mario Kart 8. Mm-hmm. I definitely would pay for some, as long as it's along the same price lines mm-hmm. as it was on the Wii U, I would definitely buy some more content for that. Nick? Um, I think overall for me, any, any game that I've enjoyed, generally, I would prefer to see substantial DLC than to see a sequel. I think we live now in, in a world where you know, games can get patched and get updated. And instead of spending money investing in a sequel, I think it makes sense to have one game per generation. Um, I mean, I would like Odyssey 2. I would like to see Breath of the Wild 2. I'd like to play Breath of the Wild 2. But I do think it's possible now that we don't need to see three editions of a series on one console and spend 50 quid each time. I think you know Assassin's Creed, for example. the The new games could be kind of they could be DLC, and I know over time, like mechanics can get improved and stuff like that. But I use Minecraft as the example again that the game is constantly evolving and constantly getting new content, and there's a one time purchase price, and then you can buy cosmetics for extra money if you want, and other sort of skins and stuff like that. But I think it just adds more to like there's. I think there's not many consoles where there's been two Fire Emblems. And Three Houses is a pretty substantial game. And just having an extra storyline to go through, like a year after release, is a really good way to sort of continue the the franchise and the series without needing to invest in a whole new game. 
and into a whole new battle system and, me- and mechanics and it just keeps the game like t- ticking over until the next generation when you can improve it and i think maybe controversial but i'd like to see mario kart switch to a service rather than a, a game and whether that comes with a monthly subscription or not is 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 not relevant here but if they just had mario kart and then every year 18 months or two years they added new characters they added new tracks um either for a dlc price or you could pay like a yearly subscription or whatever or a monthly subscription and you can dip in and dip out as you wish i think that could be a good way of keeping gamers engaged in games and still like keeping revenue coming in for the companies without having to need the risk of investing massive amounts of money in a sequel and i think because games are so expensive at least triple a games are so expensive to develop now i think developers are going to start playing a lot more playing it a lot more safe with the sort of innovations that they have and i think we're going to see potentially less innovation because people know what sell people like the developers know what sells and to try and do something new outside the sort of indie space or maybe Nintendo is probably going to be too risky. And I think this method of upgrading games or adding new content to existing games is a good way to get around that situation. And keep They're it. doing it on Mario Kart Tour constantly. <laughs> it's a shame that they couldn't take that kind of yeah. premise and give events and all that and stick it in Mario Kart 8 as well mm. at the same time. It's just a shame the game's garbage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How about you, Greg? Yeah, like like obviously Mario Kart E is it's so good. Like it, you almost feel like it it nearly doesn't need a sequel. Mm-hmm. Like it could they could just keep releasing new tracks on it for however long they want, and it could even like release. Uh, I kind of always kind of fancy the like a double dash um, DLC where you can yeah, it's something they could do just as a as an extra. You know, it would mix mix things up a wee bit. Um, I was absolutely ready for more worlds to to be available for Super Mario Odyssey as a as a DLC, like for however much. But we're sort of past the stage where I think that's really feasible. I think this the the, the sequel is is way more likely now, and it's it will be coming probably within the next twenty four <laughs> months anyway. I would I would say. Um, as you going to say six months then? Eh? <laughs> like uh, obviously. The perfect example of that is like Super Mario Galaxy on the Wii, like uh, the Wii didn't have DLC and stuff, so <laughs> they had all these I- ideas and stuff left over, so they they made a, a 3D Mario sequel, and obviously in Super Mario Galaxy 2, which is something mm-hmm. we're, we're not really familiar with. Um, so yeah, Odyssey 2 over Odyssey DLC, I would say, is probably likely. Um, I would buy, like, like I said there, like FIFA... If they offered a DLC pack just to upgrade FIFA 20, like I'd absolutely be happy enough to pay that. There's no chance in hell I'm paying to pay to to buy FIFA 21 when mm. it's FIFA 19.3 or whatever. Yep. Um, <clears throat> FIFA 17.2. <laughs> the the biggest shame for me really is a game that kind of disappointed more than I expected to when it came out, and that's Super Mario Party. <laughs> that yeah. that needed DLC like the so easy just to to throw a few new boards and stuff in, and it's obviously not common now. They'll they'll release a Super Mario Party two and they'll they'll probably end up doing something stupid with it, like everybody going around the board again in one car or <laughs> mixing it up just for the sake of it. So it's unbelievable that they didn't really do that or expand the multiplayer options online for that because they're so limited. Mm. Um. Aye, that's the one that kind of sticks with me the most, like because it could have been a, a great game, and for me, it's just it's pretty average to be honest. You got to visit it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> I think the, the the thing for me is that I think everybody has to just do a little bit of research about the game that they're buying and the content and the package that they're getting, and if they're not happy, don't buy it or wait until it's cheaper and the DLC is included. You know. The only way to make DLC practices good is to support the ones which you agree with, like, and that's it, basically. I think if we want to see more good 
DLC options, then we should buy the ones that uh, are consumer friendly and ignore the ones that aren't. Completely agree. Put your money where your mouth is. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give us a like if you've enjoyed our content. You can also check out our other great content on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and the Any Cafe podcast from all good podcast providers. Just follow the links in the description below.